Hello and welcome to the Inquisitive Crafter. I'm Katrina Stewart from Crafty Jacks and today I'm going to be demonstrating to you how to spin on a drop spindle. Now a few videos ago I showed you how to put a leader onto your drop spindle so mine already has a leader loaded and ready to go. Now one of the first things that you'll notice as you're a new spinner is oftentimes your spindle spins and catches your fiber. So I'm going to show you what I do to help prevent that from happening to me. When I first learned to spin on a drop spindle, a friend of mine gave me this little wrist to stuff. Now you can knit one, just cast on a bunch of stitches, knitting around, or if you have an old pair of socks that is so far beyond repair that you're not going to darn them anymore, you can cut off the top, cut off the cuff, and felt it so that the ends don't fray on you. This just slips onto your wrist and becomes like a little wrist distaff. Your fiber pops in here and it just holds it up out of the way at the top of your hand. When we talk about spinning, there are two directions for creating twist. There's Z-twist and S-twist. Z-twist is clockwise, Z-twist is counterclockwise. This is only important because you need to know which directions you've spun your singles in so that you can ply in the opposite direction. In this case, I'm going to be spinning my singles clockwise or creating Z-twist. So to do that, I can just turn my spindle so that it follows the same direction as it would for a clock. And you can see right now I'm just spinning it, but I'm not actually drafting out the fiber. And what I'm going to show you first is how to park and draft. So you can get a fair amount of twist built up here, and then you can park your spindle in your legs and draft it out. And what happens now is all of this twist that was built up in your leader here goes up into your fiber supply. So you just pull a little bit out, that's the drafting part, and let that twist run up into that fiber and turn it into yarn. So draft and pull it up, draft and pull it up, draft and pull it up. Now I can feel my yarn and go, I like the feel of that, so I'm going to go ahead and wind it on. Now when you start winding your cop onto your spindle shaft, I like to make it so that my yarn runs in parallel to each other around the shaft. And then I go back to drafting. So I'm going to do the park and draft one more time. Just build up some of that twist, park it, pull the fiber out and draft. And again, you can feel your yarn as you're making it and feel if it feels the same, then you've probably put the same amount of twist in. Again, I can wind this on and I'm still putting my yarn parallel to each other along the length of the shaft. So just lining it up as best I can. And I always want to leave enough that I've got a little bit of leader hanging over the top. There I feel like I've got, it's too short of a leader. So I'm just going to make it a little bit longer by taking some of that off. Now I'll show you what happens when you start getting a little bit more comfortable with that and you want to start spinning and drafting at the same time. So you get your spindle started and you're just simply going to draft and pull it out. Draft and pull it out. Spin it and let it go. So you'll watch my fingers and I like to draft from there and then pinch so that my twist doesn't go into my fiber supply. So my hand comes up, pulls out a little bit of fiber, pinches, and lets the twist run up. And I continue in that method. When I've got a good long leader, I wrap it around my fingers. And then I continue winding my leader on. Now when I am winding this yarn on, I want to fill up about a third to a half of my shaft parallel to each other before I start winding it on at a 45 degree angle. And so we'll keep going along here 
I'll show you what the 45 degree angle looks like. If your spindle starts to kick out, it's just because it's losing its momentum and you need to put a little bit more twist into it. So you just keep drafting. And at any point you can go back to parking and drafting if it becomes too much. And so I've got about just a little over, or just a little under a half of my spindle with the yarn wound parallel. And then what I'm going to start doing is wind it up to the top of the whirl at a 45 degree angle and then wind it back down at a 45 degree angle to the bottom of where I wound the yarn on parallel. And then I go back up at a 45 degree angle and down at a 45 degree angle and then back up making sure that I leave enough of a leader at the top that I've got something to hang on to. And then I continue along. So again, we draft. And then when I've got enough yarn, and I'm going to keep following the up and down pattern at 45 degrees. And what this does is it just gives your yarn something to hold on to so that it doesn't collapse on itself, which you can often find will happen if you just keep winding it parallel. And so you don't want the singles to, to get collapsed on each other and um, get knotted up and tangled up so that when you go to ply later, it doesn't work very well. So one more time, I'll just show you again, drafting out, wind it around your fingers, and you continue winding it up and down at a 45 degree angle. Now, if you go to pause your spinning, I like to wrap it just around the top of the shaft and then take my fiber, wrap it around the shaft like that, and then I can tuck it away and it's safe until the next time I want to come along and start spinning. So that is how you spin on a drop spindle. I hope you found this video informative. If you have questions that you would like me to answer in a future video, please send them to ask at craftyjacks.ca. That's ask at craftyjacks.ca. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye for now.